and welcome to the 838th meeting of the HDC, Tuesday, April the 20th, 2021. If you wish to be heard at this meeting, please sign the speakers list provided on the City of Laurel's website or contact the staff. The chairman reserves the right to limit the amount of time each speaker has for each agenda item. The qualifications of the members of the commission, the staff of the commission, and any consultants used are on file with the city and are hereby made a part of each and every application heard today. The guidelines and procedures adopted by the commission are also made a part of each and every application. Each application heard today is considered on its own merits and is not to be considered as establishing precedence for any other application. I just want to uh, go over a few reminders. Uh, first, to identify yourself when speaking each time for the record. Uh, this is imperative for the record. When done speaking, please use the mute button on your computer or phone. Uh, this will help eliminate background noise. <clears throat> Second, if we do experience technical problems during the meeting, we'll be suspended until the issue is resolved. Um, if unable to resolve the issues in a timely manner, meetings shall be postponed. Once the issue is corrected, I will call for another roll call and then we will resume the meeting. After the staff presents the application report, I will ask commissioners to request a motion. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Mr. Cotin? Here. Council Member Lez? Here. Ms. McSini? Here. Ms. Lubinecki? Here. Here. Ms. Frazier? Here. Ms. Rambo? Mr. Davis? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, and are there any discussions or corrections with the meetings from the HDC meeting on March 16th? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. We approve the minutes from the March 16th meeting. I second the motion. Okay, I have a motion by Ms. Lewinecki and a second by Ms. Frazier to approve the meetings. Uh, can you please call the roll? Ms. Lewinecki? Yes. Ms. Frazier? Yes. Council Member Lez? Yes. Ms. McSini? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Circle I've stayed. I was not here for that meeting. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, on to the first agenda item, HDC 050-2021 or uh, 113 St. Mary's Place. Uh, would the staff like to present the report to the commissioners? Uh, yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Chair and Commission members. Uh, the applicant is seeking Historic District Commission approval to demolish two existing houses, a home located at 20, 2, 229th Street and a duplex located at 222-2249th 229th Street. The homes are currently vacant. The homes will be demolished as part of the project that includes the construction of a 36,000 square foot multi-use athletic building addition and a 28,000 square foot outdoor or turf field located at St. Vincent Pilate High School. Per the engineer's report on 229th Street, the original portion of the first floor framing is bouncy. A leaking roof in the rear addition is causing interior finish damage. Potential roof framing damage can occur with continued water leakage. The exterior wood planking is at grade, providing easy access for wood infesting insects. Per the engineer's report for 222-224 9th Street, the exterior walls show evidence of brick movement and cracking in the south and rear wall. 
there is a gray depression at an enclosed crawl space opening. This depression will allow water to pool in the space, allowing for foundation settlement. The rear roof addition is inadequately, inadequately attached to the existing brick wall. The front brick porches are failed. There is noticeable deflection in the first floor ceiling in the areas of the roof support. There is a roof beam that is grossly inadequate in the front third of the south unit. Per section 20-26.13 of the Unified Land Development Code, the, the Historic District Commission may approve an application for demolition if it will not have an adverse of impact on the historic district and or denial of the application will result in a substantial hardship to the applicant. The applicant has submitted an estimate cost to rehabilitate both properties, which totaled between $175,000 and $185,000. The estimate cost added with the cost to resubmit new plans and begin once again with the Planning Commission, Board of Appeals, and Historic District Commission process uh, would, in staff's opinion, result in a substantial hardship to, to the applicant per the uh, Unified Land Development Code. The applicant has stated that they intended to repurpose the brick from the houses for use in both the school's theater entrance as well as the facade of the proposed development. They also indicated that they would work with the Laurel Historic Society to provide materials from the house, from the houses for their use. This project was also included in the Planning Commission Board of Appeals approvals. The applicant, Mr. Jeff Palumbo, and his team is on the call to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopp. Um, open the floor up for any comments on the uh, report. Um, Mr. Quicklun, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Lubinick. First, I want to welcome you back, Thank Mr. You. Chairman, Thank you. and we're glad to see you back again. Thank um, you. I have very mixed feelings about this because it is a contributing structure. And while it looks like the, the amount of repairs are substantial, they're not anything that would have happened in a property had, that had it been adequately maintained. And, and one concern I'd like to, to express here is that the fact that they would have to go back to the Board of Appeals if this was denied uh, is not a factor in whether this is a hardship. I mean, that is to, to include that in, in a description of reaching the hardship level is, I don't think, appropriate. Um, Ms. Lubinecki, I, I was speaking with the whole process, not, not for the appeals process, but for the entire process, if, if, the, if it was. I, wasn't, I was not including that within this, um, within that, the context of saying that it was for the, an appeal. Okay. But it's, that's what it sounds like. But even if they have to go back, that's not really part of the hardship. The hardship becomes whether the economics of the actual property are a problem, not the process and getting approvals or not approvals for their project and things. It's not really our, our issue or part of the demolition issue. So, so that's, those are my comments. Thank you, Ms. Lumenecki. Are there any other comments or questions for the staff or the applicant? <clears throat> uh, Marlene Frazier. Hi, Rob. Um, I have a, a couple of things that concern me. Is One is once a building is taken down, there's no putting it back. I would like to see a professional record created of both structures if permission is given to demolish. Uh, measured drawings, photographs, and architectural survey so that we will have some record of what was there. Also, as we all know, especially after this past year, there can be problems on any construction project or any other kind of a project. And I would like to see a, a provision that the houses not be torn down until construction is begun on the new facility. Um, if, if I could, uh, first of all, thank you for the time. Um, and through this process, um, I have been working with uh, an, ar uh, an architectural researcher who has come out and looked at the properties um, in hopes that she could help me kind of understand uh, what, what it would take to, to get them fixed up if we had to, but also to talk about 
uh, you know, the history of the buildings. Um, and she did make a recommendation, um, um, the, if, if we're able to, to demolish the buildings, um, a mitigation plan, uh, which includes uh, what you were talking about, bringing in a, a company to do a historical study of the building to record all, all the ar architectural things that are involved in the building, um, research on the families that live there, where they came from, ethnic background, where they worked, um, and all to be recorded. Um, she also mentioned a, a Maryland inventory of historic properties um, that it would create document, uh, an examination of the building to be documented for the things that you are, are mentioning. Um, we also talked about the things that she was very concerned about. Uh, there were a lot of things that she didn't think were up to the standards, uh, you know, for uh, uh, our, there were things that she thought that it's integrity, uh, different things involved in the integrity of the building that would make it um, something that should not be demolished. Uh, she did has concern about the uh, the front of the building, the cornice and the brick are her concerns. Um, and in working with our, our masonry person, he he he's thought that we could save about twenty for twenty five percent of the brick and save the cornice. Um, so what we were uh, what I was proposing was that um, as I mentioned, this is a, a multi phase project. The last phase being uh, a new theater um, that would go into a space that's already has a um, you know classrooms that would be taken down and building a new theater. Um, so I've had an architect do a rendering to do the entrance of the theater um, that would be a model of the front of uh, 222, 224. It would have the cornice. It would use brick from the original house. It would have uh, a uh, um, age appropriate windows or the style from that uh, time with the arched windows. So he's already created a rendering um, that looks like the front of the, the face using the materials uh, from the building. Um, those were the two things that she was very you know, concerned about the integrity of, of that building. And along with that, um, she's willing to work with our students to do the research projects on, on the area, both um, you know, we're talking about the main building that we have redesigned uh, to look to kind of simulate the row houses on Yellow Row. Um, so we would have plaques on both buildings explaining, you know, that this, uh, this was designed with the uh, row, uh, Yellow Row in mind and explain what Yellow Row was, that that was the housing for the mill workers. And then on the entrance to the theater would be a plaque with information, you know, saying that this entrance was built with um, repurposed supply of materials from the house on uh, 9th Street and explain what the neighborhood was, you know, why it it's a historic district. So, um, yeah, so we, we have addressed some of those issues and making sure that everything is documented and that people understand, you know, why th this area is important and, and why, you know, what, what we've done to, to make sure everybody knows that. It sounds like a good project. Um, it sounds like a good plan. Where would that, that information, who would receive that information? The city? Uh, um, the information, oh yeah, I think it would be, I, I'm not familiar, um, I feel bad saying this, but I'm not familiar with the museum here. It's right across the street, but I don't know if that's something they would be interested uh, mm -hmm. you know, in obtaining. Um, I'm sure we would like to have a copy as well. Absolutely. No, I think uh, Ms. Levin, I can hear. I think this this sounds very positive, and I'm and I'm really glad to hear that you you're taking some of the steps that that Ms. Fraser had mentioned to to really incorporate the structure into the into the into the future of Pilates. I I, I, ha I wish I could show you the rendering. Um, you know, it, it very much looks like the house on, you know, like the duplex. Um, and I think it's a, it's a beautiful entrance to the new theater, but it also ties in, you know, the historical uh, value of, of the block. If, if it pleases commission after the meeting um, sometime this week, when, if Jeff, you want to send it my way sometime this week, can I send it out to everybody? Absolutely. Okay. Great. That would be great, Rob. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah. Rob, Rob, it's my yeah. pleasure. Let me just make a couple of observations. I was, um, as some of you know, uh, the house we live in now was to be torn down in 1975. Uh, Merc, uh, Citizens Bank owned it. And we had 24 hours to make a decision to buy it, or they were going to tear it down, put a parking lot on this corner. And um, so I, I sort of crawled through this house uh, for the 24 hours preceding the notification to, to citizens that we would buy it. The, um, the downside of that was I had to pay 25% more than it was worth because a real estate company had offered to buy it and turn it into apartments. Now that said, um, I've gone through a lot of, of aggravation with the brick in this house. What I didn't realize was at the turn of the century, the mortar that they used didn't have a lot of mortar and it. it had a lot of lime. And that's why it deteriorates, especially if it's on the exterior of a building, especially if it's a fireplace. But I did notice when I was up and walked around the around the, the building, the duplex, which is the one where Joe Robinson was born, there are some odd shaped bricks in that building. Uh, some of them are double length. Um, uh, and, and they're worth saving because they probably, and I don't know, they probably came from the brickworks on New York Avenue in Washington, D.C., which was the local brickworks where bricks were locally sourced. Now that said, um, I also um, did some research on moving brick buildings. And the, the one that stands out that I was able to get some information on was the one that they moved across the street in uh, Savannah, Georgia. It's a long time ago. And it was a million dollars to move a brick building about twice this size because you can't deviate, you know, a half inch or a quarter of an inch. So all looking at all of those factors and trying to address an issue that the Sly family has raised now for over 30 years on the on dedicated alley that runs behind their house. And as I understand an agreement from the applicant that they will abandon that entrance entrance because they're gonna move the entrance up to this location. Um, uh, while I appreciate the contributing, the contributing factors of, of the, especially this building, I, I think that um, when all is said and done, especially if the, if the applicant's going to incorporate uh, brick and the, some of the woodwork into the uh, new entrance to the art center, uh, I just make those observations, Rob. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for the comments, Councilman Liz. Uh, any further comments, questions for the applicant? Uh, can I entertain a motion on the application? Uh, this is Ms. McSaney. I move that we approve HDC 050-2021 for, for 220, 222, and 224 Ninth Street um, with the contingencies that the records be made that were suggested um, that the as much material can be reused as possible. Uh, I'll can I add one additional? Yes. That, that I think Ms. Frazier's comment that the de demolition be contingent, also contingent on, on uh, commencement of uh, construction of the new approval, approval and commencement of the new facility. Yes, I knew there was one more thing. Thank you. So I'm with sorry. the three addendum. Okay, I have a motion by Ms. McSini and a second by Mr. Davis. Uh, Madam Secretary, could you call the roll, please? 
Ms. McSaney? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Councilmember Les? Yes. Ms. Lubinecki? Yes. Ms. Frazier? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Focoon? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, I'm thank sure you, we'll be seeing very much. applicant uh, window the next month or so to uh, address the second part of your project. Okay, for the changes in the exterior? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. We're, okay. Good luck, and we look forward to seeing you. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to the next. I, I'm sorry, I don't know if I was muted or not, but thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Uh, moving on to the next agenda item, HTC 057 2021 or uh, 342 Laurel Avenue. Uh, and I have the staff present the report to the commissioners. Good evening, Mr. Chair and fellow AGC members. This is Monte Burroughs, Planner 2. The applicant is seeking HDC approval to paint the gutters, window trim, and front porch columns of the property located at 342 Laurel Avenue. The applicant has painted the window trim, front porch, uh, porch columns, and gutters dark blue. The applicant is willing to change the dark blue color to approved HDC recommended color. The applicant is also seeking re retroactive HDC approval to demolish the existing garage and re remove existing fence. The existing garage was approximately 441 square feet. The existing fence was six feet in height and 24 inches, 24 feet long. The item was tabled on January 19, 2021 of the HDC commission meeting for 60 days. The applicant is on the phone for any call, um, any questions, and thank you, Chair. Thank you, Monte. Um, I guess starting out with the applicant, uh, of course, the garage is already gone; it's demolished, and um, I guess for future, you know, you're in the historic district, and you have to get, get historic district approval from the commission before any outside work is done on your house located on Laurel Avenue. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Uh, do you understand that you're in the historic district and any work that you have done on the exterior of your property needs to come before the commission before work is to be started for any future projects you may have? Is there a representative from the? May not be on the line anymore. Okay. Because this is supposed, Rob, wasn't this supposed to be the uh, realtor representing the owner on this? That's correct. Yes, they were supposed to be on, and I can't tell if they, they might have dropped off. Let's see if Mr. We can Chairman, get what happens if we deny this retroactive approval? I mean, not, not so much for the coloring, but for the demolition. Uh, why don't we see if we can get the representative for the applicant back on the line and maybe we'll push this uh, agenda item down uh, to the end of the meeting and see if they will come in to uh, represent the application. If not, then we have to uh, make a determination what we're going to do with it at that time. Rob, this is Mike Les. Let me just make a comment. I want to thank the uh, city for getting uh, uh, ecological services out there to take care of the spill, along with the uh, disposal of the tank. As Laurel Fuel Oil has explained to me, it's expensive to, make, to get rid of those tanks. Uh, but I will note one other thing. The what our jurisdiction for what's happening here is on the exterior of the house. 
if you go to the first picture that was given to us in the package, there's all kinds of landscaping, bushes around this house that have been taken away. And I think, if, if I remember correctly, that falls within our purview. So when we do get them back, they're going to do to, I mean, this house looks kind of nude right now. Are they gonna, I mean, there's an awful lot of landscaping that goes on around the neighborhood with people trying to beautify their properties. So again, uh, Rob, is that correct? They, they, they we're responsible for approving the landscaping on the outside of the house, is that correct? Well, they're going to, they have to maintain a certain amount of green area per the code. Right. And then, yeah, I mean, there's that. That that's is. number one. That's the that's the uh, percentage. But then what they did was they took out every piece of landscaping except that one tree from around this house. And I'll just point that out so when we get them back on the line, okay? Okay. Thank you, Rob. Mm -hmm. Rob, may I make a car comment? This is Marlene. Um, they also got rid of the shutters. Yeah. And. Even though, even if they left the pad for the garage, they have these like about 18 inch walls around that bed, which are kind of odd looking. Yeah, I think we have a lot of questions for the applicant. So they yeah. need to be present before we can go on with this application. Um, but we're coming up on the 60 days of the table. So we're gonna have to make uh, some decision on it if we can't get them back on the line. Uh, Rob, didn't we actually, Rob, didn't we actually deny this one originally? Yeah, that's what oh. I was about to say. That, that I think this was actually denied. So if they don't come back on, you can and you actually you could table this if you wish for them. If we can get them back on, we could table it for the sixty days. Is that correct, Rob? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, can I make a comment about the landscaping? Yep. I should say that per the code, per 20-26.19 20 for landscape, minor landscaping for small shrubs or flowers and routine landscape maintenance, such as mulching and pruning trees, does not require commission approval. Well, it's, I'll, it's, I'll typically, for, it's this, typically for this new. Isn't, this isn't new. minor. This is pretty major. What they've, okay. It says they've, that, de they've that denuded this house is what they've done, Rob. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it sticks out like a sore thumb in that neighborhood. Okay. All right. Thank you, Rob. All right. So we're going to try to get the applicant back on the line. We'll push this to the end and uh, we'll move on to HDC 055 2021, where uh, 701 Main Street. Uh, would the staff like to present them report to the commissioners? Yes. Good evening. Again, Mr. Chair and fellow board members, this is Monte Burroughs, Planner 2. The applicant requests HDC approved to install a white picket, a white wooden picket fence located in the front of the property. The fence will be located on an empty lot located at the corner of 701 Main Street. The fence height will be three and a half feet. This item was tabled in January 19, 2021, historical district meeting for 60 days. The staff does recommend that HDC approve um, certificate 0552021 to include the following conditions. And I know one of the chair, uh, Ms. Kern, had asked a question about would they be removing the um, existing fence that you guys had tabled the first time. And part of the conditions is that they have to remove the um, existing fence before they put in and install this new fence, this wooden white fence of three and a half feet. Thank you, Chair. And the applicant is on the call for any questions. So, Mr. Higdon. Thank um, you, Monta. Right. Go ahead, Ms. Lubinecki. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Higdon, do you have a timeline when you think you can you could tear down the fence and put in a, put in the replacement that you've proposed here? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. We can we can have it done in thirty days. Okay. Thank you. Let me. Uh, this is Mike Les Chester. This is Mike Les. I I assume you're not going to paint this thing right away. You're going to let it weather for a couple of months. 
Sure, that is that'll be fine. Yeah, I think that's what you have to do so the paint doesn't peel off right away. Agreed. All right, thank you, Rob. And uh, Mr. Higgin, you're proposing to just put the fence on the property that's uh, facing Main Street, correct? Not the property that's uh, not the part of the property that's facing Seventh Street. Correct. What are you going to do with the existing fence on that side that's there? Seventh uh, uh, Seventh Street. That uh, that's. That's 216 ex extended, right? There's, right. there's just bamboo. There's not really a, 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 a real fence there. I mean, there's just uh, uh, bamboo sticks type of thing. We were just, it's not really on fence posts or anything like that. The only real fence that was put in there was the one that yeah. brought up run up Main Street and then we actually turned into the driveway a little bit there uh, where the existing uh, painted fence is. So well, okay, well, so you're, you're going to leave it, that the way it is. I, I, I thought unless you guys wanted another way. It, it's, it's Rob, this yeah. is Mike Les. I walked up there and looked at it. There's a lot of wisteria there. Um, I, it's been there for years. I think it's actually within the state right of way because the 216 right of way actually, if you look at the line uh, on the uh, the property line, it actually extends all it extends pretty pretty well into the property there from 216. Okay, so I assume that you're not going to cut any of those bushes down. Is that correct, Chester? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got we've got some bamboo sticks and we've got some wisteria there that's sort of hiding that side. Correct. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, can I entertain a motion on this application? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve uh, HDC 055-2021 to remove the existing fence and install a 42 inch wooden fence to be painted white uh, by the end of the summer. This is Ms. McSaney. I'll second that. Okay, Brooke, we have a motion by Councilman Les and a second by Ms. McSaney to approve um, HDC 055-2021. Can you please call the roll? Councilmember Les? Yes. Ms. McSaney? Yes. Ms. Lubinecki? Yes. Ms. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Kulkoon? Yes. Motion carries. Good luck with your fence project. Big Thank improvement, Mr. Higdon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. Goodbye. Moving on to it. Next agenda, HDC 051-2021, uh, Main Street, the Aladdin Market. Uh, would the staff like to present the report to commissioners? Uh, yes, good evening, Mr. Chair and fellow commission members. Uh, this is Joshua Mitchum uh, giving the staff report. Um, the applicant is seeking uh, HDC approval to install a flat wall decal sign to the storefront windows of the Aladdin Market located at 308, uh, 308 Main Street. The applicant is proposing the installation of a continuous flat wall sign, a continuous flat wall decal sign onto the windows of the Aladdin Market storefront. The decal is part of a single design that will be applied to the four window sections across the storefront. Section A is a 72 inch by 45 inch uh, in size. It's maroon red colored background with white text that reads Aladdin Market, Turkish, Greek, and Persian. The white text of the business's phone number in small images of the store and contains small images of the store's items. Window section B is 37 inches by 45 inches in maroon red colored background with the business's phone number and text that reads Mediterranean and uh, also small images of the store's items. Window section C 
is 50 inches by 45 inches, maroon red color background with white text that reads Aladdin Market, Turkish, and Greek. And again, small images of the store's items. And lastly, window section or window decal D, which is 72 inches uh, by 45 inches in maroon red color with white text that reads Aladdin Market, Persian, and Mediterranean. White text of the business's phone number and small images of the store with store's wares. The proposed signs meets, meets the zoning requirements set forth in ULDC section 20-17.4, which is our sign regulations, and staff recommends approval of, uh, of HDC certificate number uh, 051. Uh, that concludes the reading of the uh, staff report, and I believe the applicant is online to take questions if needed. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Josh. Uh, any comments or questions for the applicant? The commissioner. Uh, yes, I have a number of questions. Uh, the first one, which I'm hoping the applicant can just clarify something for me. I'm uh, looking at the uh, the sign. I guess it's uh, the, the image that's up right now. If we flip it around, there is some text there that I believe is in Arabic, and I wondered if he would mind translating that for us. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Um, I mean, anything wrote in um, in Arabic is already wrote in English. It's the same thing. Like uh, the one you're talking about is just uh, which one? Which section? I know he started. Uh, it says Persian Mediterranean, and right above the Mediterranean, there's something. I think it's in Arabic. Yes. Yes, that's like uh, what we have, uh, uh, like a grocery grocery and arabic also too the same the same everything's uh, wrote in english or arabic the same uh, meaning yeah i just wondered what those specific words were i mean I, I don't mind that they're in arabic i just wondered what they were so is that like does it say grocery or does it say halal meat i mean I, that's 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 my question is it say it say the grocery uh, um, arabic food grocery arabic food grocery okay Thank you. I just wondered what what that was, um, and and my other somewhat more serious concern is uh, the presence of all the images of all the foods that are there. Looking at our uh, HDC regulations um, under Design Guidelines 202631, um, under General Guidelines Number Six, where it says message uh, the message should be limited to the specifics of the business located within the premises, logo symbols, slogans, and brand names are permitted. However, the size of these symbols and characters is limited to three inches in height. And I could be wrong, but it sure looks to me like they're a lot more than three inches. And, and frankly, it seems like an excessive number of uh, images there, and it actually detracts from the sign, so I have some real concerns about that. But most importantly, I think that is not within the guidelines as, as stated. Um, uh, Mr. Maher, um, if you'd like to respond to um, um, Ms. Lubinecki, if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, I would um, move on to, I guess, uh, respond to her question. So I don't know if you wanted to respond first. Uh, regarding, you mean the size? Well, the uh, yes. Um, the size and the number, I believe. Yes, the, the problem with those sizes, if I need to make it a smaller size for the images, you're not going to see the, the image when they print it. Yeah. Well, that's, but that is, that is kind of the. That is the crux of the matter is that, that maybe images there are, are not appropriate or if there's one particular brand name that you use or something that could be spelled out as opposed to the pictures. I mean, we generally don't have product pictures in our, in, in our approved signage like that. Um, any any picture I have on the on the image for the sign is already I have it in the store. Like I did not take anything from the internet or anything. I I took the picture myself and put it on the the design. Right. And that that I understand that, and that's not the not really the issue. And by the way, I think your store is wonderful. I've been there a number of times and bought the product, so I I think it's a terrific addition to the neighborhood. Um, but from an aesthetic standpoint, we're really talking about 
the signs are supposed to uh, kind of blend in. And if you look at the rest of the signs around, we generally do not have multiple products in in the in the signage. And also, as it noted, they shouldn't be more than three inches high. So so the the question for you is is really taking off the the images. You mean all the images, or just keep some of them? Well, I'm sure we could come out with a compromise, but I think, at least from my perspective, a lot fewer. I'd like to hear from some of the other commissioners on this if there's if they're having any issues with this, or is it is it just me? This is Miss McSaney. I agree with um, Ms. Lubinecki in that they are very busy signs, and unless you are stopped at the light or walking by, I can't imagine being able to tell what the products are. Um, and I can't think of any sign on Main Street that has a product placement on it. Um, you know, I think the optician might have, you know, a, an illustration of spectacles, but other than that, um, it's, it doesn't seem to me that this would really, um, that people would be able to see enough to entice them in because of a particular product. Um, it does seem cluttered. And I, <clears throat> like Margie said, I don't think that it would be inviting uh, to come in and see all these little things. Um, I don't think it would draw people in. A cleaner layout might be better to entice people into the store. I mean, I think your core message that you have halal meats, that it's Persian, Mediterranean, Turkish, and Greek, you know, the, the key messages that you have there are the critical ones I, I'm thinking for people to come. You know, I, I think you've accomplished your goal without without over accomplishing it. I mean, I'm sorry, the idea from those pictures because it's international food and they have yeah. different, different like international for different uh, nationality. So at least I have some of those for everybody to know what they have here, because, you know, from outside, you can tell if you carry my the one I like or that you carry this kind of item, I can you can I can stop by. That's the idea. This is Miss McSini, but I think what we are questioning is one, our rules say logo shouldn't be more than three inches tall, which yours probably are. And two, that who, if someone is able to read the labels in the photographs on those signs, they're also going to be able to see inside your store and see the wonderful array of products that you have. Um, so that I think the sign is would be drawing attention away from people actually looking in the window. You know, that somebody driving by needs to be able to read that you carry six varieties of chickpeas or date syrup or feta um, as opposed to seeing each particular brand not being able to see what the little what the brands are this is chairman clacoon if i could make a comment are you uh currently working with a sign company to design this sign or or um is this something that you're coming up with on your own no a design company Okay, so um, I think what some of the other commissioners are saying is uh, you have a lot in this sign and maybe you can make the sign as big, but with less wording, less pictures and highlight um, things that would help draw the public into your, your shop. Sure, I can do this. So this item, but bigger size, okay. And fewer images. Mr. Chairman, this is Patrick um, Davis. I have, I have a question for the applicant as well. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, just quickly for the for the applicant. So 
I certainly understand the, the comments and the, and the concerns pertaining to the rest of the commissioners. My question is the, the products that's currently displayed on the sign, are those the more common or the, the most popular products that you're, you're, you're currently um, selling from the establishment? Or is just a general overview of the variety of products that you currently have in the establishment? Hello? I'm not sure the applicant uh, understood your question, Patrick. Is he still there? Sir, are you still there? He's on yes, I'm still here, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you, did you? Did yeah. you uh... Yes, the, everything a general item. I don't have any specific for any, any uh, nationality. Everything general in the picture. Okay. If I could, uh, Rob, let me just make one comment. The um, having been in uh, some stores that I would regard as a bazaar overseas, and in countries that didn't even have all, they didn't have. Uh, they were essentially Hispanic, but they had stores like this. The, the I think that. What I see the applicant trying to do is uh, give the passerby, if they're walking by, or if they if if they they've stopped for the light, this is what we have to offer. I think we're going to see a lot of like electric type businesses uh, coming to Main Street, and now they present what they the business that they're doing. I I mean I, I'll let I'll, I'll mention the. Uh, the uh, bakery, the Hispanic bakery and optical and, and piles op optician storefront. They don't even speak any English. So they're trying to make their way into uh, what I think will eventually end up being um, an electric uh, business type of community. And and again, I'll just, I'll just mention that. I'm not saying that that there isn't an awful lot on the sign, there is. But I think that uh, as the applicant has pointed out, he's got Turkish, Greek, Persian, Mediterranean. Uh, he's got a lot going on here, okay? And I think um, I think that's what, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um, as Karen said, she's been in the, in the uh, store. I have not been in this store yet. But my my grandson and and daughter and wife were down in the bakery today, and then they came back and told me how the business model works there. You know, pick the pick the baked goods out, and then you get up and the and they'll tell you how much it is. But again, I think this is the type of businesses we're going to see coming to Main Street that will attract people to Main Street. Uh, we can only have so many attorneys and so many banks and one post office. So again, I, I think that there's been some appropriate comments made about the size of, uh, of some of these items on this sign. And I think that what I heard the applicant say was they can go back and talk with their sign designer and see if they can come up with something a little bit better that's more in conformance with our, our, our sign ordinance. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Councilman Les. So uh, does the applicant understand what the commission's asking for? Um, go to your sign designer and, and um, maybe redesign it. Come back uh, maybe in a month to the next meeting and uh, you know, present us with what you've uh, changed the sign to. Bob, uh, this is Marlene. Would it yep. be possible to provide the applicant with a copy of the guidelines for signs? so that um, he could give those to the sign designer? It's definitely, we can do that. Uh, what sign company are you working with, sir? I, I have I have somebody like, oh, he's, he's my friend. He's my friend. So I can, I can already do it again, no problem. But so we can, um, Mr. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if I can also say something as well. Um, i just like to, uh, I guess, explain my thought process when I was looking at this application. So this uh, kind of store, it's an international uh, supermarket 
this design for their sign is actually it's in line with many of the other um, international food stores in the city. Um, you have something like international. Um, you have uh, Super Best International Supermarket here in Laurel. You also have a number of stores that do have this kind of design. And the thought process here was that the applicant's wares being kind of like on a shelf in the um, shelf in the uh, the sign design was would, uh, would actually serve as their, I guess, main point of advertisement for the different kinds of items that they have. Um, so in terms of the zoning ordinance and the sign, uh, the actual decal itself, we don't have any hard um, uh, specifications on the images. Um, the actual frontage of the sign is is um, uh, meets our regulations. Uh, so that's what I put forth when I put together the staff report. Um, it's just in line with what I've seen for these kind of businesses and what they're trying to do and um, how effective that would be on Main Street. I didn't see any, I guess, um, issue with the amount just because it is one part of a consistent visual scheme going from left to right. So that's just uh, my thought process of the matter. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think we have uh, issue with the size, just uh, the content seems to be uh, uh, a lot in there. And I think a lot of those other stores, it, correct me if I'm wrong, are not located within the historic district. Yeah, they're not in the historic yeah, district. Not within, not, not within the historic district, but they do have the similar, um, I guess, the, the uh, they do put a lot of their different items on this sign. Um, it, it's it's not in the historic district, but like that's what I was looking for when in terms of like being fair to the sign and uh, its design. Right. But but that's not really the issue for us. How how the sign the signage requirements outside the historic district are significantly different and allow many things that we would never approve in the historic district. So I think we have to really kind of go back that that it's really fitting in with the entire um, uh, atmosphere and and sense of place of the historic district is really the critical issue here. So the fact that other grocery stores do it differently, and I know they do. I mean, I drive around the city, is really not the issue here. I think I think Mr. Clacoon had come up with the what where we would perhaps like to proceed here. And then um, Chairman Kukun, we do have someone on the call that would like to make comment as a member of the public. That's okay? Certainly. Uh, state your name for the record, please. And so My name is Mandy Kaur. I just, uh, I'm joining this call for another matter, but hearing all this, I um, really thank you to allow me to share my thoughts. Uh, I feel like we live in a diverse community and this store represents the diversity and it doesn't look like a McDonald's or a brand name, you know, global store. And that is, it's part of its identity. You know, the clutter you see, the pictures that are confusing and the different writing, that is a part of its identity. Um, in, my, in my past, I also was a small business owner and struggled in paying rent and making ends meet. Many of these stores are owned by husband wife teams with the family member, you know, helping. They are trying their best to make ends meet. They do add a lot to, you know, a, a community that is very attractive. People love to go to these uh, local stores and uh, support local businesses. And part of the identity of this store is the signage. Um, I do feel that if he has to redo the sign, the, it, it's going to be burdensome for him financially, unless the city is able to help him out with that. They, you know, I mean, unless it's absolutely like, you know, breaking like some major, um, like being in, inappropriate or the imagery is not right. I think you should, you know, consider that this is part of the identity of the store. Um, but you're all very qualified. You've made some great points. I just wanted to share that in my opinion, as a member of the public, this is what makes it attractive to me. Uh, if I stop at a traffic light or I'm driving by, I can see that this is an authentic Mediterranean Persian store. And that is what would attract me to go in and to stop in, you know, as opposed to a, another big chain store. Thank okay. Thank, thank you for your comments. Um, as far as I know, the, the sign, you haven't uh, gotten the sign made yet. Is that correct? Yes, it's not made yet. Correct. So there wouldn't be any additional expense, but um, I understand uh, what Ms. Carr was trying to convey there. Yeah, but I mean, it's, uh, the designers, you need more, uh, more money to, to redesign it. Well, 
Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes, sir. Mike, let's, let, me, let me make a couple. I'm ready to make a motion, but let me ask this, Rob. Does this does this uh, store owner um, um, can they avail themselves of any of the assistance programs we have in the city for storefront? Uh, they should be able to. We can talk with them about possible the facade improvement grant. Yeah. Um, to to take a look at that. Yes, they, we could we could talk with them about that. Um, Excellent. Excellent. That might mitigate some of the costs. Uh, with that, I'm going to make a motion that we table this for up to 60 days. That'll allow the applicant to uh, to work with the city and uh, come up with a, uh, I'm not going to say a better sign, but just a different sign. But it still has to convey this idea of being a Mediterranean type of uh, very small grocery store. And that's my motion. This is Ms. McSaney, I'll second that. Okay, and uh, I would just like to add one thing to the motion. If you are going to do anything with your facade or awning, you may wanna include that in the, um, in the agenda when you come back before the commission and we will be able to um, look at that and possibly approve it if, if that's uh, something that you're gonna consider doing in the future. No, Excellent. I already applied. I already applied for it, and oh, I'm still waiting good. also. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, Brooke, I have a motion by Councilman Les and a second by Ms. McSaney. Could you please call the roll? Councilmember Les? Yeah, and I want to thank Ms. Carr for uh, for commenting on her perspective of, uh, of the value that small businesses lend to the Main Street uh, quarter. Yes. Ms. McSaney? Yes. Ms. Lubinecki? Yes. Ms. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Davis? Mr. Davis? You're muted, Patrick. My apologies, yes. Um, Ms. Carr, thank you again for your comments. We certainly appreciate that. So, absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Coon? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you uh, next month or the month after, and um, we can get this approved for you. Thank you. Because it's a great store. I mean, you have wonderful things in there. I mean, I love everything you have. Your baba ganoush and your hummus are fabulous. Thanks so good. Okay, moving on to agenda item HDC 053-2021 for uh, 401 4th Street. Would the staff like to present the report to the commissioners? Good evening, Mr. Chair, again, and fellow board members. This is Monte Burroughs Planet 2. The applicant is seeking HCC approval to make exterior renovations, which include the removal and replacement of the roof, gutters, downsprouts over the kitchen, living room addition, and detached garage. Also, the applicant is requesting to remove the chimney that is peaking from the top of the house. The property has two chimneys, and the applicant is re requesting to remove one. The applicant is removing the chimney because it's no longer needed to vent the heat out of the home. The current roof over the living room addition and detached garage is a three-tab style in charcoal color. The applicant proposes to replace it with a Certainty Landmark Pro Max Def Hunter Green roof. The current roof over the kitchen addition is a three-tab style in charcoal color and the applicant proposes to replace it with a Marco Metals premium fashion gray metallic to match the existing metallic roof over the second floor. The current kitchen and living room addition and detached garage gutters are green and the downsprouts are beige. The applicant proposes to replace the gutters with the same existing style and change the color to hunter green. The downsprouts will be replaced with the same style and beige color to match existing siding. Staff recommend historical district 
to approve certificate number 053-2021. Thanks, Chair, and the applicants on the phone for any questions. Great, thank you, Monte. Uh, does the commissioners have any comments or questions for the applicant? This is Marlene Frazier. I do have a question. Does the new roof material match the existing metal roof material? Yes, it will, yes. And the chimney that he's proposing to take down, that's in the 1960 portion of the house? Um, I believe so. Yes, I it is. So. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Sorry, it is indeed on the 1960 portion and it's crumbling at this point at the top and losing mortar. Any further questions for the applicant? Can I uh, entertain a motion? This is Ms. McSeeney. I move, we approve HTC 053-2021 for 401 4th Street as presented by the applicant. I'll second that. I have a motion by Ms. McSeeney and a second by Ms. Lubinecki to approve HTC 053-2021. Uh, could you please call the roll? Ms. McSeeney? Yes. Ms. Lubinecki? Yes. Councilmember Lez? Yes. Ms. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Davis? Absolutely. Mr. Cocoon. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Good luck with your uh, project. Moving on to the next agenda item, HTC 052-2021 or uh, 331 Main Street. Uh, would the staff like to submit the report to the commissioners? Uh, yes, uh, good evening again, uh, Mr. Chair and fellow commission members. Uh, my name is Charles Mitchell. I'll be giving the staff report for 331 Main Street. Uh, the applicant is seeking HTC approval to install three flat wall sign decal signs on the storefront of the El Boyne Gusto uh, Bakery located at 331 Main Street. Um, window sign A, or actually uh, these two wall signs will be applied behind the window glass. I just want to make that specification. Um, window sign A uh, is 20 inches by 60 inches with vinyl material with white and yellow graphics, uh, with text that read El Buen Gusto Bakery. So there's gonna be two of these on the two separate windows along, along the uh, storefront. And then we're gonna have a door flat wall sign which measures 29 inches by 23 inches in vinyl material with white and yellow graphics with text that reads El Buen Gusto Bakery, coffee, breads, and more, plus the business's hour of operate, hours of operation. Uh, the, ap the applicant proposal appears to meet the design criteria outlined in the design guidelines of the City of Laurel Historical District Commission and staff recommends the HTC approved certificate number HTC 052-2021. And I believe the applicant is on call to take any additional questions and that concludes the reading of my staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Um, does the commission have any comments or questions for the applicant? Um, I have a, a comment just, just to clarify, and I think Mr. Love uh, clarified this, that the signs that they were, you can still see through the window. Is that correct? Correct, as far as I understand. Right, just so it's just the signage. And also, yes. I want to tell you that this is a great addition to Main Street. Their food, their bakery goods are terrific. And the smell in the morning when you come down Main Street is just so appealing. I can't tell you how many more times on our morning walk we are now stopping in the bakery. So you're a great, it's a great addition, but, and the signs, I have no problems with the signs. Mr. Chairman, I would like to just echo uh, uh, Ms. Lubinecki's comments as well. You know, two days ago, I was walking to the post office and it was just nice to kind of just turn your head to the left as you walk towards uh, Marston Boulevard and just see the you know folks going in and out that the establishment. So it's certainly a welcome addition to Main Street. So I, I certainly echo Mr. Benecki's comments. It is, and um, I just have to state that in some of the older buildings, it is very difficult to get a restaurant or food business established because of uh, 
um, just the um, plumbing and you know different things that that have to be upgraded. So it's commendable that they're able to get in there and open up a business like this on Main Street. And we definitely definitely uh, welcome a business like this. Yeah. Uh, can I entertain a motion for this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve HDC 052-2021 as presented. I second. second that. Uh, Mr. Davis beat you, Ms. Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have a motion by Ms. Lubinecki and a second by Mr. Davis to approve um, HDC 053-2021. Can you please call the roll, Brooke? Ms. Lubinecki? Yes. Mr. Davis? Absolutely. Council Member Lez? Yes. Ms. McSini? Yes. Ms. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Clotoon? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, moving on to HDC 0. 47-2021 for 36 4th Street. Uh, would the staff like to present the report to the commissioners? Good evening again, Mr. Chair and fellow board members. The applicant is seeking HDC approval to construct in addition to the existing detached garage in the rear of the property. The property is a single family dwelling Section 20-6.16 of zoning ordinance established that the maximum building coverage for a lot at 30% and the minimal green space for the lot 65%. The configuration of the lot with the proposed detached garage addition, existing single family dwelling and driveway are within the limitations mandated by the zoning ordinance. In addition to maintaining the required lot coverage, the applicant has removed an existing nine foot by nine foot concrete pad behind the rear deck and planted grass seeds. The applicant has also removed and filled with dirt a 10 by 15 man-made pond area. The proposed addition will be, will include expansion of the existing detached garage, a new roof connecting the existing roof. The new addition will measure 11 by 22. The facade material, for the new detached garage addition will match that of the existing gray siding and blue architectural shingle roof of the existing garage. The new garage door will match the existing nine foot by eight foot white metal garage door on the existing detached garage. The height on the addition is 14 feet. The applicant will remove the existing detached garage window and install the 24 by 36 window on the right side of the addition. Staff recommend um, HCC to approve 047-2021. And I know before the meeting, um, fellow member, Ms. Kern, I had a concern about the um, facade of facade materials of the addition. I'm ensuring her that if the applicant build or construct anything outside of what he has recommended, he will be fine and he will have to um, go by what the HDC staff report recommends. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the applicant is on the phone for any questions or concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Monty, for the report. Uh, any uh, comments or questions for the applicant from the commissioners? Yeah, and my concern, uh, 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 with all due respect, Monta, was not on the materials, which I understood that they were going to be the same materials, uh, complementary. But it was it was how this the roof line of the new structure was connecting to the current garage. I mean, I was having a lot of trouble visual. That's why I had asked last week if we could have an image of what the entire project looked like because one of the issues and and part of this is because some of you are no are relatively new to the historic district uh, process is that we have approved garages uh, additions in the past and the results of the additions uh, even when promised that they'll be uh, done complementary to to the current garage have been disastrous okay so so that's why i'm making these comments so you can see that it's not just based on your garage 
but the experience of past garages. And, and I have a lot of trouble visualizing the roof line of this new garage in connection with the old roof, the current roof. So I, I'm looking for a little guidance here on, on what it is the final project is actually going to look like. Would the uh, applicant like to address some of those concerns from council? I don't actually know how to address that. It's just going to look just like the rest of the garage, continuous, continuously over, you know, 11 more feet. Well, same siding, same everything. Well, it's not the siding that's the issue here. It's actually on, on, your, on your left side of, or the, the current left side of the garage, if you look at the picture, of your current garage, right? Right. Okay, you have, I think it's the next picture over actually. Right, so that's a peaked roof, okay? And yes, then the, the roof on the other, the middle portion of this is an up and down roof. I don't know what we call it, a side, the side. So how is the new addition connecting to the, to the, to the current it's gar gonna look just you see the side with the walk-in door yeah it's gonna look just like that coming forward and down in the back sloped i mean is is it the same height is it the same pitch no is it's 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 two it's two foot higher it's two foot higher yes ma'am it'll have a little two foot wall right there with siding on it step flashing and and uh, I'm having, I'm, you need that for um, headspace so you, your garage will be high enough that you can pull a vehicle in or a, a truck or something? I got show cars and I was going to put a four post lift in there for storage of the cars. Okay. Right. So you, so you need to raise uh, the newer garage addition a little higher than what you currently have to be able to accomplish that, correct? Yes, sir. You got it. Okay, yeah. this is actually what you're telling me is actually more alarming than I was concerned about <laughs> without without seeing an image because you're now telling us that this isn't actually an extension of the current garage. It's actually a different elevation completely and a different therefore a different pitch of the, the No, the pitch is the pitch is the same. The the pitch will be the same. It just will be higher. It'll be two foot higher. Two foot higher, yep. Yeah. But it will still yep. have the same pitch, the same slope that the current roof has. Right. You can see that. And um, well, it doesn't actually look that way. Actually, in the picture, it looks it looks uh, broader. But that's the image. See, would that's that was my my problem is visualizing this. I'm sorry. With just the drawing of the of the um, the beams doesn't really help here. So you see where the little. Um, three foot door is on the front of it. Yeah, I see the I see the door. Yeah. So and you see that roof line, the way that I goes from front slopes from front to back. Yes, I do. The the new addition would slope the same way on the same angle. Right, but it's going to be two feet higher. Two feet higher, correct? Yeah. So it's going to look. So there's no symmetry between garage number one, middle space, and garage number two whatsoever. Would that be a fair assumption? All except for it's all wrapped with the same stuff. Well, that's not that's that's uh, that's great, and and I'm glad that's that. But but that's not really the issue. Well, what's the issue? The issue is that that it seems to lack total symmetry in terms of of a, of a building, sir. And and I'm I tried very nicely, you know, to ask for a, for an image of what the final building would look like i i didn't think that was an inappropriate request since you were building an addition onto it especially now that you're telling us it's two inches two feet taller before i can say that this fits in with the historic nature of the of the, the district i'd like to get a better sense of what it's really going to look like and and what you're telling me is you're building basically three asymmetrical you have three asymmetrical structures coming together Um, if that means three different little roof lines, yes, ma'am. 
did you consider pitching the gable the same way it is on the left side, on the right side? Uh, no, because then I wouldn't be able to get the cars in the air because it's going to be a cathedral ceiling and you need the space in the middle of, of that to get the roof line up in the car. So if I did it the other way, I, I wouldn't know how to put a four post lift in there and put a second car up on top. So how many cars high are you going to do? Say that again. How many cars in your stack? Two. Two? Oh, good evening, Mr. Chair. If I can just interject, um, an accessory structure cannot be no higher than 15 feet. And per the um, staff report, it states that it's going to be 15, 14 feet high. So there's nothing in the um, ordinance that says he couldn't be, build at that height. And also there's nothing in the ordinance that says that a detached garage has to be symmetrical. So per the code and per the staff report, um, Mr. Horton is within the guidelines to build an accessory structure of this height. And also he's, as he stated, he's building this to accommodate, if I may say, for a hobby to restore and to, you know, um, keep storage of his cars. Thank you. Could this be visible you, from the street? Monday, did you hear the question? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. Uh, would this be visible from the street? No, it would not. It, it, it won't be seen. The most if you go down that street, unless you turn to the right, you wouldn't you would barely even see this um, picture right here, this garage. But the addition, you definitely wouldn't see. Thank you. Uh, is there any further questions for the applicant? Uh, can I entertain a motion for this application? Uh, no motion to approve or deny. I'll make a motion that we table it and ask the applicant to come back with an image of what the final uh, garage will look like. I will second. Okay. Madam Secretary, a motion from Ms. Lubinecki and a second by Mr. Davis that we table um, shoot this agenda item and um, we have the applicant come back and present an overall plan of the finished product. Can you please call the roll? Ms. Lubinecki? Yes. Mr. Davis? I think Mr. Yes. Davis. Yes. Yeah. Council Member Liz? Yeah, before I vote, Gary, let me suggest this. Uh, you, you, you drew us a picture of how you're gonna do the, uh, the ceiling joist for this, for this addition. What you might wanna do is draw a side diagram and show, I assume you're using a uh, freestanding four post uh, car hoist, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, if you draw that in there to show with just, with just you know, how the two cars will fit in there, I assume that's what you're trying to do. Store I've your measured it up to the T. <laughs> yeah, I understand, but it may be, may be more understandable to the commissioners if you show that in a drawing, that's all. Right. And, and with that, I'll vote yes. I, yeah, the interior is not the issue here for me, at least, Mr. Les, uh, unfortunately. I understand, but in order to do that, he's got to, as he pointed out, as Gary pointed out, he, he's got to he's got to have the clear space inside, which dictates what the roof line is going to look like. I I appreciate that, uh, uh, Karen, but again, I think it would be helpful to everybody to visualize how the overall picture is going to look here. And with that, I'll vote yes. Thank you. Ms. McSini? 
Yes. Ms. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Cocoon? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. So um, you're going to give us a rendering of the finished product and uh, come see us next month or, or thereafter? This has been tabled, Mr. Chair. He's got up to 60 days. Is that correct, Robert? Yes. Okay. That's correct. Thanks, Gary. I'll be there next month. All right. Okay. Look forward to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming the applicant is available now for HDC 057 2021 for uh, the 342 Laurel Avenue. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for getting on the meeting with us. Uh, I think some of the commissioners have some comments and questions uh, for you. Uh, I'd like to open that up to the commissioners. If I could start, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, yes, there sir. used to be bushes around this house. There's one tree left, and I want to appreciate the uh, fact that we had ecological services out there to remove the tank and take care of the spill. Oh, but oh. this is what I this is what I what I've described now, and I perhaps is not the right way to describe it. It looks like a denuded house because there's no landscaping around it now. They've ripped all the bushes out, and the only thing is the tree in the, in in the uh, if you face the house from, from the avenue, it's on the left. And I think I, I think that in all fairness, to the other houses in the neighborhood, and we can't. I mean, I, I I'm just surprised that there's no landscaping left here. So I'll just point that out. The other thing had to do with the color of the blue. I went and looked at it again. It's a very very deep blue with a lot of black in the paint. And I don't think that conforms to what we have in our palette of colors. So I think that that needs to be uh, uh, you know, recoded with an appropriate blue color. And I think that the, Albert, who brought up the issue of the, uh, of the shutters being gone now? I did, I did notice that. I'm sorry, go ahead. I brought up the shutters. Um, there were shutters, but they've been taken off and none have been back they've taken flight okay all right so i think that the i think the the applicant has got to tell us what they propose to do about the shutters uh, would the applicant like to address some of these concerns and if you could state your name for the record and your relation to the uh, relationship to this property Certainly. So my name is Mandy Kaur. I'm a real estate agent with Redfin. The homeowner who purchased this house as a foreclosure abandoned house uh, didn't truly understand that it's in the historic district. And um, so they made some mistakes in the beginning, but they understood. And since then, as you know, they've done environmental mitigation. They've paid dearly for it. Uh, some of the, the, uh, the, the blue color, which I, I really on behalf of the applicant, I apologize. I'm attending today because they're having some health issues and unable to attend even an online meeting. Um, and Brooke was kind enough to say that I could attend on their behalf. Um, so the blue color was a true misunderstanding. Their contractor went to the to your office or whoever he spoke with may have approved it for the deck and he thought it was approved for other areas. And that was a complete miscommunication. They are willing to change it back to an approved color. And same thing with the shutters. I don't believe they're aware, but at this point, they whatever is needed, they are willing to do. And with an apology for the mistakes made in the past, they truly did it out of not having clear understanding. Okay. To, you know, make it correct. So please okay. know what, what needs to be done and they will do it immediately. Okay, so you have the authority uh, to state to us um, these changes will be made and then request other items like uh, shrubbery, uh, I think was one of the main questions. Uh, do they have a plan on what they wanna do? Uh, I guess after the mitigation process is done on the property, 
uh, if they're going to plant bushes or trees back in some of these areas. As far as I know, that was not uh, something they were planning on doing. But if needed, just let me know what is appropriate and I can let you know very quickly. Um, Les, would you like to address that? I yeah, I, again, it, it, the house just looks naked. And it's in a neighborhood where a lot of people spent uh, some time and effort to uh, surround their homes with, uh, with um, uh, shrubs. And there was a lot of shrubs around this house when Mr. Haas lived here. And that's many years ago. Now, so I, I think what you need to do is there needs to be a, a, some kind of a plan to put some shrubs back in. Now, let me just ask a question, Mandy. Is mm -hmm. this a flip property? Or are they going to live in this property? It is a flip. Yeah, and that's the problem. Let me just yeah. say this. We got a real problem with flip properties. Where are you licensed? Are you licensed in D.C. or Maryland? D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Okay, there's a, there's a, and I'll just point this out because I've made, we've made the point to the real estate commission and we're going to pursue it. There's a box on that, on that contract that says, this property's in the historic district. And the real estate agents just run right over that. So people that are flipping properties are not aware that they've got to come to a historic district. I'll point that out. You're on the brunt of my, uh, uh, of, of my statement tonight, but we have raised the issue with the real estate commission and I'm going to the legislature about it. Because in fact, because on these flip properties, that's what happens. Yep. The, the, pe the people that are buying these properties, putting some effort into the interior, then they want to flip it. And they don't even realize that number one, and I don't know if any electrical work was done in this house. I assume there was, because I knew the one of the previous owners. An electrical inspections required by the city of Laurel, not by the county, but by the city. Is that correct, Robert? That is Robert? correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so th there's at least one inspection required in addition to coming to the Historic District Commission and you know, getting a, you know, telling us what you're gonna do so that we can bless it and say, this sounds good. Because in fact, the property was abandoned for many years, not abandoned, but it was run down for many years. So again, uh, I, I, take that back to your, 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 your realtor. Is that correct, Mandy? That is correct, yes. Okay, take it back to your board of realtors that we're gonna raise the issue with the legislature in Maryland. We want a phrase in there. We don't want just a box that you check because the more that these houses get flipped, the more we have problems with the people that are buying. And, and, and again, let me just ask one other question so I understand it. Has this house actually settled to the people that are buying it, the flippers, or is it being, is it an open title? So no, it's not been sold yet. It is, yeah. uh, it is supposed I, to be sold. So I'd just like to say that, you know, when these homes are being sold by licensed realtors, we, you know, make the homeowners and the public aware if there are covenants, any restrictions, yeah. historic nature of the property, and we guide them and we educate people who may not know before. But once they're working with a licensed realtor, we are able to tell them about these things and help them through the process if they do not understand. Um, but what happens is when people buy it, like there are a lot of online auctions, uh, foreclosure properties, they are not, they don't even know if the property is occupied or not. They have no idea if it's subject to a homeowners association, historic governance, anything. So for, so when it comes to a life, uh, uh, like sale through a real estate agent, then we follow all the rules and regulations, but it's the online auctions, foreclosures, uh, even HUD properties that are not making people aware of the condition of the home, whether it has mold inside, whether it has an occupant inside, and people have to buy these properties like sight and scene. And um, oftentimes, like these are homes that general public, like I couldn't, I would love to live in this historic district, but I wouldn't be able to have the cash to an up, update a house like this. It takes hard cash to update it. So it, you know, really uh, it attracts like um, 
people who are willing to put up the cash often investors. So it kind of is, you know, they come in, they put in the cash, hoping to make some money. Um, and, you know, in the end, the property does get a facelift. In this case, they didn't understand the rules and they misunderstood what they were doing. They paid for it dearly. They are, they want to make everything correct. Um, now they have complete understanding and respect the process. I'm going to help them with this um, process um, to help them understand clearly what needs to be done. Um, but really the, the burden, I would say on really, you know, the understanding the restrictions that come with the property is, I would say if you could um, raise it more for these online auction and foreclosure homes, which don't use licensed realtors, that is where there is a gap. Well, well, let me just say this, okay? I used to be a realtor, mm -hmm. okay? The problem here is, and I've pointed it out to a couple of people that have come to me with problems with realtors that didn't tell the purchaser that there were conditions on this property, that they can go to the Real Estate Commission in, in Maryland and mm -hmm. ask for a penalty to be assessed. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, the realtor will in fact end up with a real problem with their license, okay? Yes. That's what, I know you're just the me messenger tonight, okay? No, I'm no. smiling, mm -hmm. I, you smile, okay? But again, this is a problem mm -hmm. in, in no other situation. You cannot keep an open title on a car. In the case of re real property, which is even more expensive, essentially what's happening is there's an open title to the property. No, no. What do you mean by open title? The investor owns the property and it will be sold to somebody else. So they, they will be a owner of title at every in every instance. So if I go to the county, it's not listed under that property, that that flipper's name. At this it might point. be because the county is late in recording things, but it is it is definitely purchased. It is owned by somebody. This property has not settled, as I understand it. Is that correct? I mean, the current owner owns it until the new owner buys it. So there is a person who is the record. Who's doing the, who's doing the work on the property? Uh, the current owner. Uh, well, I'm going to disagree with you, okay? Because what I look at it is it's an open title, okay? Because they don't want to pay all the transfer costs. No, 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 no. That is not the case, sir. They have paid the transfer and recordation when they purchased. In fact, they had to pay 100% because it was a foreclosed home. I, and and now they own it and they own the title. I can send you the, I guess, you know, like proof of title from land records because they own this property. Okay. Let me come back to what I said. Sure. Did you, did, were you the were you the uh, real estate agent of record to sell this property? To purchase? No, it was purchased as a foreclosed home. So no, I was not involved in that. Okay, then the, then the real estate offered a purchase. There's a box there that says historic district on it. Not for, we, not for foreclosed homes. There is no, they don't disclose anything at all. When it's a foreclosed home or an auction home, which is how this home was, it, people have to buy it sight unseen. They're not allowed to enter the property. They don't tell them if yeah. the property is subject to any restrictions. So when it was purchased by the current owner, he did not have any understanding that this is in, in a historic home or it is subject to certain restrictions. All right, well, I'm gonna take it up with the legislature because Thanks. I think there's a real problem and again, it's not your issue and it may not be the purchaser's issue, but the fact that this had a gap, had an oil tank and had an oil spill involved, that's of concern to the city of Laurel. Mm -hmm. It's of concern to the neighbors. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have to disclose that there's any environmental issues with the property? Right? So no, he, he did. So the current owner had this issue. He hired an environmental mitigation person that did the mitigation and there was soil testing done and the process is now complete. It took several months and a lot of dollars to complete it. That has been completed. He has disclosed it to the potential buyers and yeah. as well as the fact that the property is in the historic district and subject to uh, you know, certain uh, restrictions. So he has- Mr. Mr. Kuhn, I, think what, I think what happened, Mr. Kuhn, was 
when they just demolished the building, the Jeep was in there, the, the tank was laying on the lawn, and we realized that there was an oil spill. Okay, that was after the fact. Okay. Right. But I was just I was wondering if it had an environmental uh, problem with the property that would not have to be disclosed if you're if it was it, it was disclosed. It was disclosed to the yeah. No, I know it was in this case, but if they're buying the property through auction and no, there, there was no. an environmental issue that would not have to be disclosed. No, nothing. They disclose them. Nothing. If you if you want, I'll tell you some of the auction sites. Mm -hmm. uh, Hub Zoo is one of them. Uh, there is Alex Cooper. Uh, there is HUD foreclosure. Yeah. Um, and they don't disclose anything. They, in fact, tell you do not approach the property. They don't tell you if it's subject to HOA, if there is any front foot you know, um, lien, any kind of like solar lease. They don't tell you anything. So you have to bid on the property, sight unseen. Uh, and then if you win the bid, then you're in a contract and you have to purchase it. And then you don't know what you got. Wow, that's is, scary. Is there any place? Okay, Mr. Klagoon, I'm going to take that up with the legislature because mm -hmm. I think there's a legislative issue here that Maryland needs to address with these people flipping properties because they claim they're not, they don't know they're in the historic district. They don't know if there's a oil in the tank and there's oil on the ground, was an oil spill in the basement and so on. But we'll take that up with the legislature. Okay. Ms. Frazier, did you have a question? I did. Is there any place that where these properties are listed for sale ahead of time? Oh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, they are like when it's sold through the multiple listing system for real that, use. At that time, we follow all in Maryland, we have more disclosure requirements than anywhere else. And when it goes through a licensed realtor, we meet the disclosure requirement. Now, but what I'm saying is, is there a list that can be accessed of the properties that are going up for auction? Yes, yes. So you have to, there are various auction sites. I can compile a list and send it to you. Yeah. Listing. Yes. And we can sort of check ahead of time. <laughs> yes. I, you're I, just a messenger, Mandy. You're just a messenger tonight. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. No, and I'm I'm happy to you know like throw light on the fact that this homeowner didn't realize, but you know, yeah. had early and um, he's willing to make it right. Okay. So yeah, okay. Good. With, with regards to the environmental issue, you're, that's almost wrapped up from what you're saying. Uh, do you see any other? Uh, I think they were, issued, they were issued a certificate by the state of Maryland, Mr. Klukun. Ecological, whatever that contract was, they came and removed the tank, did the soil samples, and then there was a certificate issued by the state of Maryland. Right, but I don't think it's cleared yet. So I'm just wondering if there's any more issues that might come up on this property before it is resolved. And yeah. Well, electrical inspections, like Mike said. Wouldn't it, no, I'm regards to the uh, MDE, the environmental issue. Uh, that report's not closed out yet. Okay, so Did that's something we're gonna follow, Mr. Goon, we're gonna follow up on that. Okay. Okay, and again, uh, Mandy, the, the only thing that goes on inside the house is not the WSSC, because those plumbers tend to have WSSC licenses, but the electrical requires on these flip properties an electrical inspection by the city of Laurel. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, in regards to the MDE question, uh, they are wrapping up their investigation. I spoke with MDE, the inspector today. Good. Uh, they said they had been by the property actually yesterday. And right. they, they anticipate and they they are very complimentary of the of the property owner on working with them. And they Good. said they're wrapping up the last few things and they anticipate very soon uh, being completed with their investigation in the case. Good. So there there shouldn't be any other major changes to the property. So there wouldn't be any issue that they could start planting bushes and shrubs and trees because uh, the environmental part of that is wrapped up. I would, I would think so, yes. Yeah. So uh, if you're, um, you know, I don't know who you're representing, whether you're representing the seller or the buyer, but uh, they would be able to start uh, putting some uh, landscaping back on the property to make it more uh, appeasing to the neighborhood. 
Certainly. Just to be, you know, uh, make sure that I have clear understanding, are we talking in the front or the back? And, and it's a corner property. Okay. It's, it's a corner property. So I think you have issues with both sides, you, with the front end side of the house. Okay. Laurel Avenue and 4th Street. Okay. There's a good deal of debris where the, um, uh, the garage was taken down, bricks and chunks of concrete. And stuff like that. So the right. Yeah, and I'm assuming some of that wasn't done because you were dealing with the uh, Maryland Department of Environment. But now that that's wrapping up, they should be able to proceed forward with uh, doing some of that. And um, you know, minimal escaping. I don't think you'd have to come before us, but uh, I think if you started putting up fence rows and and uh, hedges and all that. Probably would have to come back before the HDC. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. So, so I'm just looking at a note of things for the homeowner to do. Remove the blue trim and change it back to the white. Is that correct? Is or is there a, is there is there a paint color that is approved that I can? Yeah, Mandy. There's a blue that the uh, that Brooke has up in City Hall. Okay. There's a palette of blues that are approved. Okay, so they're palette of blues. They're not as black as this. Okay, palette of blues. Okay, and then uh, and then same thing with the shutters. They have to match the same color. Well, typically, what will happen is somebody will come in with a proposal to put plastic shutters up, and it would probably uh, they would also be blue. I, I'm not going to put anything in anybody's mouth. Uh, and and again, they they don't have to be wooden shutters. They'd be the pseudo plastic shutters. Okay, but they do okay. have appropriate shutters. There, there is, as I may say, that is actually a really important issue if you're going to put shutters back in. And, and frankly, I'm not 100% certain that that's absolutely required. Though I think their absence is is unfortunate. Okay, but I, I'm not sure myself that I feel that's absolutely required because bad shutters look worse than <laughs> than than yeah. shutters not there at all. Frankly, and and so I have some concerns about that because the shutters need to be big, you know, because you have different sizes and stuff there. They need to, to a, a, an appropriate shutter needs to, each one needs to be like half the size of the window. So like if the window was going to close that the shutter, the shutters that are there cover that because the shutter was actually there to close the window. So the idea is that it, it can't be one of these skinny little things that that people have a tendency to do that are just out of proportion. So I I have a little bit of concern about asking you at this point to put shutters back on. But yeah. you know so, so so then do the trim and landscaping on corner in front and remove the debris from the back. Those are the items. Uh, I mean that's I would that's what I personally I feel more comfortable with that. I mean I'd love the shutters, yeah, but I think cool. there's a lot of danger in that. So um, is are there any sh approved shrubs or um, landscaping, uh, or should we just run it by you very quickly? Because you know the goal would be like after today's meeting to complete all of this in the next couple days. Azaleas are nice. Hydrangea are nice. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I would say anything that's not listed as invasive. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have to be tons. I mean, frankly, I think it'll actually enhance the curb appeal of this from a sales standpoint. So, okay. I, I would suggest a tree, but not right now because trees, the cicadas are going to kill them. So, so don't put in a tree. Yes, 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 absolutely. And also, they're saying they're really shouldn't be any trees up to six feet near a house. So um, at this point, um, I think doing something that's easy and um, easy would be best without complications. So they don't make a mistake again. It's possible to clean up the low walls around the pads in the back, the oh, yeah. old foundations of the garage. Yep. I can understand wanting to leave the pens, but not the little walls. Miss Marlene, I couldn't quite hear you. As it stands now, 
in the back, there's a pad where the old garage was. Yes. And that's fine. But the little walls around it, um, if something could be done about those, that would be good too. Okay, so the walls that are around the pad should be taken down and removed? If possible. Okay. So once all of this is done, can I send pictures to you? I think once uh, we state um, in a proposal, um, you know, what, what we're asking for, then you can go ahead with the work. Okay. And if you do what's stated in the uh, proposal, the application. So um, if there are no other requests for the applicant, uh, I'd like to. Um, obtain a, a this is Miss McSaney. I'd like to make a motion, please. Okay, I have a motion from Miss McSaney. Do I have a second? I, I'll I, second. Haven't a I haven't made my motion yet. Oh. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to move um, that we approve. HTC 057-2021 um, that the very dark charcoal navy color be replaced with a color that is on our approved palette, that the back of the property be cleaned up and that some shrubbery be planted to improve the looks of the property. I'll second. And uh, if you want to add to your motion, I don't want to put words in your mouth uh, about removing the debris around the uh, garage pad. That was in the backyard. Okay. All the, the little walls, the pile of bricks. You could neatly stack the pile of bricks because the future homeowner might want the bricks, particularly if they match the patio that's already there, but it just looks terribly messy. And the shutters, Margie? I think we said- I, I would not recommend shutters without, approve shutters without seeing shutters. Okay, so that should come back to the HTC at, at some right. point. Well, no, we, I think we're not requiring her to do the shutters. Is that All right, okay. Correct, from my viewpoint. Okay. Uh, are you finished, Miss McSaney? I am. All right, Brooke, I have a motion from Miss McSaney and a second from Miss Lubinecki. Um, can you please call the roll? Ms. McSaney? Yes. Ms. Lubinecki? Yes. Council Member Lenz? Yes. Ms. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Cocoon? Yes. Uh, Motion. Uh, how about Mr. Davis? I think he left. He left. He sent a message. He had to leave. Okay. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. We we got an education tonight from you, and I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You as well, thank you. Rob, you're on, Rob, you're muted. That was a whole lot of talk for nothing. Uh, moving on to staff approvals. Uh, is there any questions or comments about the two um, staff approvals that we have? No. Okay. All right. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, before, before we adjourn, I yes. would just like to say welcome back, Rob. It's very nice to see you. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much. It was a long couple of months. Looking back on it, it is, uh, seems like a distant memory now. So I'm prepared <laughs> to recovery and I'm very fortunate. And thank you for 